Welcome church family. Happy Easter. When this social distancing is done with, we're going to become extremely friendly like this dog. Here we are thanking our barber. Here we are thanking our Starbucks barista, thanking our mailman, and thanking a complete stranger. And here we are right before getting a restraining order. Today we're going to be talking about a topic that we tend to ignore or try to avoid. And the reason why we try to avoid it is because we are afraid of it. What we're talking about is death. Death is something that's very weighty and it's on our minds because of the pandemic that we're going through right now. According to Statista.com, Americans are 11% very afraid of death. 31% are somewhat afraid, 27% are not very afraid. So, so far we have about 70% of Americans who are afraid of death to some degree, right? And then 6%, they don't know. And I don't know what's going on with them if they just are denying that death is going to happen or, or what, but 6% don't know. And then 25%, they say that they're not afraid to die at all. And uh, I'm wondering if this 25% are the same 25% that say that they have read the terms and conditions and, and click accept. I don't know. But the fear of death shows up when we go to the doctor's office and get test results and we're afraid that the cancer is going to come back. Or the fear of death shows up in our nightmares. Like when we have a dream that a lion is uh, trying to hunt us down which is an irrational fear if you don't live by the zoo. I don't live by the zoo, but I don't know why I keep having these dreams. They're terrifying, all right? Or, or when you have a dream about a polar bear hunting you down and not to give you a nice Coca-Cola. Coca oh look, here's one of my nightmares. So today we're going to look at this a scale and we're going to try to move towards the middle of the scale because the ends are extremes. The first extreme is being so afraid of death that you can't live life to the fullest. You, you're terrified to try things. You're just so afraid to die. On the other end of this scale is you don't value life enough and so you become reckless like this guy or this guy. So what we want is to meet in the middle and that's where we're not afraid to die. We're at peace. If God calls us home, we're ready to go home. But how do you get there? How do you develop this uh, confidence when it comes to facing death? So here is our main text. It's Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 15. And in the Passion Translation it says, by embracing death. Notice Jesus doesn't ignore death. He doesn't pretend that it's not uh, something that he has to face. He doesn't belittle it. He embraces it. By embracing death, Jesus set free those who live their entire lives in bondage to the tormenting dread of death. In the New Living Translation, it says, only in this way he could set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. All right, so it says only in this way. What does that mean? Well, when Jesus went to the cross, he didn't go to the cross because of his mistakes or his sins. God wants us to know that when Jesus went to the cross, it was very specifically for you and for me. It's very specifically for our mistakes. And God wants us to know that what Jesus accomplished in his death saves us from our condemnation. All right, what does that have to do with being afraid to die? Well, a lot of people are afraid to die because they have this sense that they're going to be judged by how they lived. There's this fear of condemnation after we die. All right, and it's not just religious people. I'm going to show a quote from this website called verywellmind.com. This is not run by a religious organization. These are professional healthcare workers who are just sharing what they have learned to help people out. And this is their quote. They're talking about the fear of eternal punishment. 
Similar to the fear of non-existence, this belief does not apply only to devout believers of religious or spiritual faith. Many people, regardless of their religious persuasion or lack of spiritual beliefs, fear that they will be punished for what they did or did not do while here on earth. So just because you're uh, not religious doesn't mean you don't have this haunting fear that you'll be judged or there'll be condemnation after you die. So God wants us to understand that Jesus sets us free from the fear of death because Jesus has handled the condemnation. He's dealt with our judgment already. Right? That's really, really good news for us. And when we truly understand what Jesus accomplished on the cross, we will no longer fear death and the accusations that Satan throws at us. Because yes, we, we have sinned, but Jesus dealt with each and every one of those sins on the cross. So death is weighty. Like just talking about it, I can feel the weight of this topic. And you listening, you probably feel the weight of this topic called death. It's not something you want to bring up on a first date. Hi, are you afraid to die? Oh, please don't kill me. A right, terrible conversation starter. On the first day of the week, after Jesus had been crucified, women came to the tomb, and this is what the scripture says. Mark chapter 16, verse 1. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. All right, no, notice this. And they asked each other, who will roll the stone away? from the entrance of the tomb. Now they're asking who will do it because this is a large stone that they will not be able to move. They're gonna need help. So they're asking who's going to help us. The ne very next verse says, but when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. And that's when they find out Jesus has been resurrected. So when we understand that the stone has been rolled away, when we truly understand that, right? Yes, we understand that death is a reality, but here's the good news. So is our resurrection. Our future resurrection is just as sure as our death. That is the good news because the resurrection is not based on wishful thinking. Oh, I want it to be true. Uh, it's based on a historical event that took place almost 2000 years ago. I remember when I was little and death became a reality to me. I remember I started crying and my mom put me on her lap and she said, why are you crying? And I said, I don't want to die. And I looked at her and I said, I don't want you to die. And I remember she said, Jesus died and he rose three days later. And he wants us to know that he's going to raise us from the dead too. And although I had been going to church for about seven years, because I was about seven years old, that's when the gospel really spoke to me. All right. I was still terrified of death, but now I had this hope of it's not the end. Our resurrection is based on a historical event. Notice what happens in John chapter 20 and verse 19. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked, why is the Holy Spirit wanting us to know that the that the doors are locked. Well, I believe that one of the disciples, let's say it's Andrew, is told, go lock the door, okay? They just saw their leader, Jesus, get crucified, right? So they're thinking, who's next? For fear of the Jewish leaders, that's why they locked the door. They're thinking they're next, so they're probably praying their eyes out, asking God, what's happening? And please protect us. And, and, and so, just think about this group of Jesus followers who are huddled in fear. What do they have the fear of? The fear of death. Question, how do they go from the fear of death to faith? Because these become the leaders of the church and they end up, most of them, becoming martyrs. How do you explain that historical event? That really took place, right? How? Well, the next part of the verse says, Jesus came and stood among them. All right, he just... He doesn't go through the door. You know, you can't blame Andrew. Andrew, you didn't lock the door good enough, right? He just shows up, which apparently you can do in your new body or because you're Jesus. He just shows up and then he says to them, peace be with you. And I think this is the reason. This explains why 
these people huddled in fear, who have the fear of death, go from that to faith. And they're willing to die for, for Jesus. I still remember when I read the very last comic strip of Calvin and Hobbes. It was the very last one Bill Watterson uh, published in the paper. And when I got to the last panel and it says, it's a magical world, Hobbes, old buddy. Let's go exploring. I was surprised at how emotional I got because inside I was saying, no, don't go without me. I want to go on all those adventures. I want to hear the conversations you have. And that's the sadness of, of death. Death puts, makes everything temporary. It puts a, the end to everything in this world. But here's the good news. Jesus came and he died and he was raised to life. And Jesus puts a, the end to death. Jesus makes death temporary. Amen. If you agree, if you think that is praiseworthy to God, say amen. This is good news. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. And Jesus, the more, as I get older, the more I appreciate the gift he gives us, which is eternal life. Just think about that. He knows exactly what we really want at the end of the day, which is more life with him and the ones that we love. And this, and, and notice who gives us this eternal life is Jesus, is Jesus. This is the guy who, when he did his first miracle, it was changing water into wine. Where? At a wedding. He knows how to celebrate life. He knows the value of relationships. On his, in his mission, he went around telling people, here's how you love God and here's how you love people. And he didn't just teach it, which his teachings were amazing, but he lived it. He showed us what love was practically. This is Coach Wooden. He's arguably the greatest college basketball coach of all time. And I'm going to share a clip from an interview where he's talking about how his wife, but before they got married, how she noticed that he was so shy. And so this is how she helped him out. Uh, it might be hard for most people to believe, uh, but I, uh, as her parents said, that they had never known anyone as shy as I was. I was very shy. Really? And uh, she recognized this, and uh, she got me to take uh, speech and uh, public speaking in high school to try to help me. And that was difficult for me uh, to begin with, but it was of help, and it was good for me. And uh, she was of great help. Later in the interview, John Wooden is asked by Tony Robbins, what is the greatest challenge that you went through? John Wooden has gone through a lot of challenges, but this is what he had to say. Coach, what for you is one of the toughest times in your life, and, and how did you turn it around? The toughest time in the life that I've ever had is the loss of my dear Nellie. Yes. And that was, that's been hard. That was uh, six years ago, last uh, March 21st, first day of spring. You were married for 52 years? We were married uh, going on 53 years. It would have been uh, 53, our next anniversary. But we'd been sweethearts uh, since I was a sophomore in high school and she was a freshman. After John Wooden says what the greatest challenge was, he's asked by Tony, how did you overcome it? Or how did you move on from it? And here is John Wooden's answer. What beliefs did you develop to turn that around? What new beliefs did you have about the situation? Did you develop any? I think prior to that, to some degree, I had a fear of death. Yes. I have none now. Wow. None at all. Why is that? What I'll be with her. Now? You'll be with what her. What other chance do I have to be with her? Wow. Is there any other way? No. Although it's been years since I first heard this interview, it stayed with me because his answer is so powerful. But it wasn't until last year when I lost my Papa Duane, my grandfather, and that's when I, that's actually when I stopped being afraid of death. Because my grandfather has been with me every stage of my life as a role model. In every season of my life, he's been there. As a kid, when I got married, when I had my first child, uh, you don't need to know about that. Um, <laughs> uh, when I had, you know, a dozen more kids, he was there every step of the way. And what the reason why he's been a role model is because in every season of my life, I saw the love of Jesus. 
And when he died, I can't explain it. You know, for the disciples, they had to see Jesus before they said, okay, we believe he came back from the dead. For me, the tipping point was when my grandfather passed away. That's when I wasn't afraid to die because that's how I'm going to see him again. That's how I'm going to see a lot of loved ones again. I'm thinking of Gail, Hector, Judy, a lot of people that I'm looking forward to seeing them again. So we don't need to fear death because it's how we're going to see Jesus again. It's how we're going to experience him on a whole new level than we get to experience him right now. A preacher was informed that one of his members mother had passed away and so he wanted to write a letter of encouragement and this is what he said i heard yesterday that god had called your mother home to heaven it will seem more than ever like home to you now every single day when we close our eyes it's like we're practicing the final day when we close our eyes in death and every morning when we wake up it's like we're practicing another day, which is the resurrection day. And tomorrow when you wake up, wake up and remember that there is a day coming where you will wake up and it's gonna be different in a whole new way. I talked with one of my friends recently who is older and he said that if he gets the virus, he said, most likely he's not gonna make it. But he said to me, you know what? I'm not afraid. He said, uh, this body that he's in right now is already falling apart and he's looking forward to his new body. And when people tell me that they're not afraid to die, it, I am so encouraged by that because in my vocation as a minister, I, I'm, I get the privilege of being around people in their last days and in their last hours sometimes. And when they can look me in the eyes and have no fear of death because of their relationship with Jesus, it puts a fire in me. Uh, and, and there have been many, many people that have looked me in the eyes because of their relationship with Jesus. They have been able to say, I will see you again. No fear, just knowing that they're going to go see Jesus on a whole new level. Remember we said earlier that on the first day of the week when the women went to the tomb, they went to the tomb with spices that they had bought. And what was their plan? It was to put the spices on a dead body. They fully anticipated that Jesus was going to be still dead in that tomb, and they wanted to put these spices on his body to help with the, the, the bad aroma, right? And they also have the problem. They, they, so they're coming to the grave with sorrow, deep sorrow weighing on them, but they're also wondering, how are we going to get this large stone out of the way? And they show up, and they find out that there is no stone between them and their best friend, their Lord and their Savior, because he has rolled the weight of death away. And so they have a change of perspective and the rest of is history. Church family, Jesus has been taking away the fear of death for the last 2,000 years. And he has taken away the fear of death for me, and I believe he'll do it for you. Just ask him. All of us have to face death at some point. That is a reality. But we do not have to fear it because Jesus is bigger than death.